Hey, what's up? What's up? How much? Oh, you're in the lab. That's I'm great. in it, bro. Dude, I'm watching uh, Exterminate All the Brutes. Yeah, how is that going? I didn't know that America was named after a ex- uh, cartographer, Amerigo. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make a quick call, okay? So I'll be back. Like naming a whole continent Albert or something. Oh, yeah. Okay, one moment. I'm going to be on a quick call. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> hey, okay. Oh. Yeah, that documentary is really good. I'll actually read the book too, as well. So by, uh, I believe it's Sven uh, Linquist is the author. Short book, like less than 200 pages. So... But uh, okay. yeah, uh, yeah, I hope to work with Madison on the sculpture or her installation. And uh, we got a lot of engineering to do because uh, like uh, it's beautiful. But uh, as they say, you can think about it in your head, but when you go and execute and the thing with kinetic sculpture is it may not work flawlessly the first time. So I'm just gonna have to spend a lot of time. Luckily we did not get a knot house because uh, <laughs> yeah, the the tr- I'm not kidding. The troubleshooting would have taken a lot. Longer. So I, I think Nada was realist. The committee was realistic. You know, it would have been decorative. But uh, we'll get in. Don't worry. I'm not too worried. But uh, still documenting the Office Space Collective uh, paintings and stuff. So Sick. Uh, yeah. Oh, how's that been? Have you gotten any Hasselbach shots? Oh, Rui, amazing. Is that how you say it, Rui? Yes, Rui. Oh, okay. I don't speak Chinese except for, say, five, ten words at most. So, uh, but anyway, uh, welcome. And uh, glad to uh, speak with you tonight. So. Hi, Rui. How are you? Hi, nice to meet you in a weird place. I know, it's such a weird place. So Albert, Royi, Royi, Albert. Hi. Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm so glad here. you're here, yay. Yay, I'm, I'm also so glad that I'm here. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, Albert, I wish, you know, Royi, Albert was here in Los Angeles like two days before the MFA show and I wish he got to see uh, the show and your piece because we were, we hit like, it must have been an average of like four galleries every day that you were here, Albert. Oh, well, yeah, that was crazy. And like, I can't believe you didn't get to see her piece because it was amazing. Thank you. I would have loved to see it. 
Honestly, I, I looked at the website and was really stunned. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just had a really long week because uh, I'm actually storing a medicines installation, which was a good half a ton. It's actually uh, six components. So uh, it's in my garage now. So that's good. But, um, anyway, <laughs> well, for me. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, welcome. And, uh, Honestly, we're very casual. Uh, Gallery-wise, uh, I'm going to be honest. We're not a formless gallery, so you're not going to get Kordonsky here. You're going to get uh, <laughs> more of a uh, conceptual vibe. Uh, actually, I was talking with Ness and spent a lot of time. I mean, just a bunch of friends, you know, I guess. Uh, I mean, it's very diverse for its um, range of artists that we have. I mean, obviously we go from traditional to uh, fairly cutting edge new media. Um, one, of, one of our artists actually is doing a PhD in computer science. So she's serving computer software as art. Uh, so yeah, we have a very diverse program and we are based out of Salt Lake. Um, if you look at our Instagram, we actually have our project space up and running. So uh, and then we have two spaces. So one space is a uh, 6,000 6, square feet. Um, so we have like, four exhibition areas. Oh, you, you turn on the light. Ah, okay. So yeah, we have two exhibition spaces. Um, um, so we're pretty conceptual. The project space uh, is definitely the more cutting edge. Uh, it's very small the actual office, which I'm actually happy because uh, it retains the office space moniker. Um, that's where we'll probably start running our video and new media projects along with fairly experimental like work um, that's very difficult to show. And then the other space, which is an Indian restaurant, um, it's gonna be much more, you know, it's gonna be traditional, but a good mix hopefully um, of work, so. Yeah, so we look forward to all that, basically. And then, um, so I don't know, Patrick, what have you uh, mentioned about office space? Uh, to Roy, uh, it wasn't too much. Roy, do you want to um, do you want to recount what I said? You probably remember better than I do. I, I remember just saying Albert saw your work on MFA Index. Uh, yeah. And. Um, and you might uh, consider reaching out to him because uh, yes. he could show up there. Yes, I, I actually checked the Instagram and uh, I think I saw many um, like formal cowards people like showing their like Stephanie and, uh, and other friends and things like that. And I, I mean, I'm definitely interested in the, no matter it's like the office space or like a more traditional gallery space, I'm like interested in both because I think I mean, personally, I think I can make work or I can present my work that fit in both like settings. So yeah, I'm very interested. And yeah, you just tell me that, I mean, the location of the gallery and this is your friend and that's that's basically all the information that I that, got. That's fine. Um, yeah, we're based off Salt Lake City. Uh, hopefully we'll get maybe a small space in LA, which would be nice. Um, but that again is very difficult, um, as you probably can guess. But Salt Lake is actually always going to be the main hub because that's the unique spin. Uh, we also it's an educational tool as well for the Utah art world um, because you know people need to know about conceptual art. That's something we're sorely lacking. Like it's just painful, actually. Hopefully you two will come out here to Utah. It's, it's actually the strangest irony um, that Utah is has contained some of the most iconic land art, but the art world is like, um, yeah. I mean, it's actually a form of colonialism because uh, you know Smithson and Holt, Nancy Holt, you know, great artists as they are. I mean, it's basically a form of colonization. I guess you could read when they come to Utah, which is you know, you arguably fetishized or a foreign state to them. And then they just put their work there. Um, actually, Nancy Holt's work you know, is closer to Wendover, but has strong new tie, taught, you know, ties. 
So, I mean, there's that history of Utah as the site of experimentation for them, um, which is good, don't get me wrong, uh, in some ways, but also presents a much more complex picture than just, you know, hey, you know, this Utah contains great contemporary art. There's a difference between having a contemporary art world and just being the location for contemporary artists to do their work at. Um, so uh, one has to make that distinction. But I'm, uh, I'm actually an undergrad, um, <laughs> almost there. Marfa, yes, yes, Donald Judd. Anyway, we can spend all night going through that. But um, we want to be in Utah because, um, you know, not because I'm originally from here, I'm from Brooklyn. Uh, but I feel it's important to bring that vibe. Uh, and actually, I'm also very strong looking at like UCLA and CalArts uh, as primary choices uh, for my MFA. So, uh, but I think um, as I was speaking with Patrick, uh, we're looking to do a chunk of our, and actually with Madison as well, regardless of where we go to our MFA program, um, we would like to do our fabrications in addition for artist books and prints in Utah. Um, very high quality and much more affordable than obviously LA, which is just way too expensive. Um, there are certain things we'll have to do in LA, um, particularly if you're in printmaking, which is very highly specialized. Uh, I mean, we're not, there, you know, we don't quite have a, as a done do like type of printmaking facility, but, you know, like we can't really do like mixographs and stuff like that. But we have, a great resource of people that wants to assist. And yes, Patrick. <laughs> what? I love that. Um, well, you, do you have any questions about the space or, or anything for Albert that you'd like to ask? I mean, right now, not really, but I would love to see, I don't know, like more pictures of the space. And um, I think going through our Instagram is probably the best way. And then Bryce, uh, when he gets back from his multiple concerts um patrick uh by the way uh, speaking of concerts you need to come here next thursday you know What's big boy on? from outcast is going to be here no way yeah way do you have tickets no it's free they don't do tickets yeah he's Amazing. dropping his science outside boy oh my we're, God. we're very democratic here most of the time the great ones don't need tickets this isn't la so amazing bring a blanket um, it was like a, oh yeah so we, albert works with a team of people he's got writers and art historians that um yeah. are sort of like part of the team at office space so um yeah bryce is uh my fellow curator um, alexis isn't part of the gallery she's just the founder um now and then melissa handles uh some of the business operations and also um, we're hoping to get like a Logan area for video art and some works on paper because um, we feel like the rural area is also, you know, exposure to contemporary art as well. And that, that also goes up to Idaho as well as more than Utah. And then um, Raj is our gallery director. He handled because um, he owns the restaurant. So, you know, it's logical that he's handling the business side of things and so i've i've only done a digital exhibition um but in the so there's the office space the actual office space and then the restaurant space mm -hmm. and that's uh, actually not completely correct you're part of the collective and so. the virtual space yeah. <laughs> you've done some like, physical exhibitions uh as part of the collective we actually oh, have our own collective okay, too. okay but uh what i guess what i mean to say is mm -hmm. any kind of um work or show that you're thinking of doing, whether it be highly conceptual or more traditional in its presentation, um, is something that you could propose to um, to Albert and his team, I think. And um, and they will help, like they, at least for the show that I did with them, they helped, or Albert helped me write the, uh, like uh, the press release. And it was a it was a nice collaborative effort, and it was um, yeah, it was amazing, Albert. So thank you so much for doing yeah. what you do to keep things. Yeah, going. you got you got. Some I guess what I mean to say is there's lots more of shows next year too. So what's that? You got some uh, more shows next year. 
both under the collective. We'll, we'll keep working. We'll keep and working. And then your solo show too. As sure. Well. Well, Maybe thanks. you might have a, a solo show later this year. It's a strong possibility. But well, right now we're just waiting for our art fair applications, which are highly competitive. So, um, and then, you know, once you're in the gallery, we'll uh, try to fit you in. We're still waiting to hear back from um, Satellite Miami, um, NADA Miami, which NADA will be very difficult. I mean, if we get in, um, definitely I'll be eating sushi every day that week. Um, <laughs> Let's see what else. Uh, and then um, there's a New Jersey art fair called uh, Art Fair 14C, uh, which actually I did a feminist uh, or female artist slash feminist proposal. So we could get your work out in Jersey uh, if we get it. Um, but it's again, very competitive. So we'll see. And uh, we're asking for the subsidized booth and that's obviously highly desired. Um, but um, we're new, uh, we're, we don't, a lot of it's very much an adventure. Um, just so you know, in the long term, um, the gallery will eventually morph, um, just to be honest. Um, so um, we'll have our Indian restaurant, but that will eventually be somewhat dormant uh, when I enter my MFA. So we're gonna do a lot of pop-up shows, but I will have the, hopefully the prerequisite connections uh, if we are joining to become a NADA member successfully, um, then we can do pop-up shows. And then the gallery will also flexibly be in multiple places. So Salt Lake City will still be the main hub, uh, but I don't know, maybe if I go to LA, well, I'm definitely gonna have um, pop-up shows in LA. So, I mean, the shows will also probably have to also, um, to be honest, slightly slow down. Um, we won't be able to execute per se like five exhibitions at once just because as an mfa student um you probably already know it's a lot of work uh <laughs> and especially the type of work i do um just so you know it has a very heavy research practice um, right now i'm actually plowing through an 800 page uh, book on archaeology uh, as well as uh like tons of other books like this you know so i mean i have like uh you know 80 books on my reading list um, I'm going through, um, even just as an undergrad. But um, I still believe it's important to help artists. Um, to curate is still important, a fundamental part, because you know I'm very, um, you know, I feel it's important to network artists and then also, you know, have conceptual art and you know, traditional art too, um, more cutting edge or experimental traditional art in Utah. And uh, you know, Utah is really great. Uh, it's a growing city um, as a tech hub. Um, it's actually uh, humorously um, a, uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> going to be like Silicon Valley, basically. I mean, I mean, the joke, actually, it's not a joke. It's called Silicon Slopes. Um, that's the marketing. Um, so, Patrick, we're going to have to buy you a surge protector or something, honestly. <laughs> that should be like a, Christmas gift for you. Yeah, actually, I've been to, I actually sort, sort of helped him with the space, which looks really nice. And honestly, I would sleep there if I could. But, um, but I really think, uh, oh, yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, some of the things I need to figure out is uh, like, what do you hope to do direction wise uh, in your art practice? Uh, in the future? Like, what do you see yourself wanting to do? Um, like, for what aspect? Like, the, like in the, general, like, in general. well, maybe we'll just uh, split it up, make the question a little easier. Like, first of all, conceptually, what do you want to do? Or do you have, any, do you have a lot of like projects in the works or like? Yes. I mean, right now I'm, I'm still trying to continue my, my thesis project um, the one was the fish. I mean, there are still like different like videos that I want to continue and different places that I don't want to visit because it's like me was the object that I made kind of like travel around the city and kind of like imagine myself kind of like working a parallel universe and uh, made the mm. objects, but I consider it as a creature that it grows its from itself, not not I made them, but it's like an independent creature. So mm -hmm. um, there are still 
different locations that I want to visit and kind of like complete that that world building almost. And beside that, there was um, there's a project. Um, well, there are several projects that I'm trying to do and trying to um, kind of finish, quote unquote, finish because but. But my project never really finished. It's really difficult to finish. It's kind of like in a yeah. presentable kind of stage. So um, my project is always about, I guess, my own tradition, culture, and like Chinese traditions, things like that. Um, kind of trying to fit in the, the reality right now. But at the same time, I always combine a lot of like fictional creatures and myths. And, oh, yeah. And, um, a lot of storytelling and a lot of things relates to translations, a lot of things relates to how information is being manipulated and being played with. And I, I like to play with materials, like all different kinds of materials, like traditional kinds of materials, like ceramic, um, woodwork, and things like that. But, and also like writings, video makings, and even building a website, like as part of the project. Um, so I guess I just like to almost like creating small games that I'm playing with myself. And, and by this process, from my perspective, I'm almost kind of like constructing an alternative reality that only me, I mean, only the figure that I created for myself exists. But still, um, there's like, a, I think all the project kind of relates to each other. But at the same time, they can be presented like individually as well. Yeah, so I, I really want to keep this kind of practice. Um, myself is all, always performing in my in my videos, in all my all, all of my projects, kind of like wearing the same same outfit and um, not, not not really talking, but kind of like hide my face and um, but doing weird things. But I kind of want wish to continue that figures trying to keep that figures in all the, the videos so that every every project can I mean um, eventually becomes uh, like the the whole setting of the of this practice. Mm -hmm. So this is I don't know whether it's like a plan or it's like a um, a method or it's like a, it's in general what I'm doing I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really great. I'm glad your practice is highly exploratory. And uh, uh, I mean, definitely a lot of research practice, practice involved. And uh, so, uh, in, I, I mean, this is, I'm going to ask some considerate questions as well. Um, so, like, how do you feel like your practice has evolved, you know, during, you know, knowing that you're a recent graduate from the Cal Arts program? Like, how has that shifted, like, within? those years like in terms of like you know anything whether it's like your research themes um just your visual language i mean i'm just very curious um i think i mean there's like several elements that is like keep appealing in my in my in my projects like again and again one of them is water so i i always kind of try to include water as part of the um, the elements in all my projects, no matter as one of the creatures that I made, I, I once um, made a skeleton of water. I pre pre pretend that I'm like an archeologist, excavate the skeleton from like a dry riverbed and try to rescue it, take care of it. And eventually I somehow I succeed. I don't know how, but I did succeed in my, in my world. Mm -hmm. yes. And, uh, and there are also like many times I built like boats or fish so it's always re relates to water relates to 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 rivers relates to uh, like moisture because after it's after i came to to los angeles that i realized how different the place is from where i used to live it's like i miss water as i kind of regard it as a connection with my heritage and with my my hometown because it's it was once a water village. People traveled by with boats, but right now, I mean, it's no longer like that anymore. But this is what it used to be. And after I came here, I, I was like, oh, this is such a desert, and I'm just trying to 
search for the links and the connections that I, I want to have. So like water, um, creatures in the water and the creatures that I made up that kind, kind of like comes from the water or come from the water system is always very present in my, um, in my language, I will say. And beside that, it's like me playing with um, history, historic stories or like playing with like memes, especially like creationists. I'm kind mm -hmm. of pretending, pretending that I'm, I'm creating them, but at the same time, I'm also like questioning the, how, how real this, this means are, or how real this, um, this like psychic readings are, or how, 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 how real this history are, because it's keep being, being played with and keep being, being changed by a human. So again, it's always about human and nature. It's about me and nature. It's about history and now. So um, it's always about this, uh, but of course it's always in different forms and was different. I mean, me being different identities of being different, <clears throat> um, like different jobs, like archeologist, scientist, a witch sometimes, and sometimes like a psychic reader. It's, it's all, always changing, but at the same time, it's always the same image. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I, I haven't spoke this much for a long time. Oh, you're going to get a lot of speaking. I, I think uh, <laughs> just trying to get the ball rolling here. <laughs> but I, I guess I'm just really like this. And um, it's always a lot of like writings and storytelling, but it's always in my way of storytelling because I'm not like a native speaker. So I use like very different ways of like combining language and of combining words. So sometimes um, it's almost like a, a weird poetry with a lot of yeah. sound endings. Um, and that's also very present in my work because I'm using like subtitles or like sometimes a little bit voiceover in my, in my videos a lot, trying to play with narratives. Oh yeah. So, yeah, and it's narrative and storytelling is like, it's always very present and very important to me. Uh, and it comes back with like playing with history, playing with information, kind of like taking that back to the um, the making of the work again. Yeah, well, that, that's really fascinating. In fact, I mean, um, obviously, water, you know, has appeared as a motif in like throughout mythology and history. You know, whether it's uh, you know, like water goddesses and gods, and uh, obviously, you know, it's, you know, in traditional uh, alchemy, it's one of the four elements. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there are, there are a lot of overtones. Uh, so, and uh, also, you know, hopefully you'll get a chance to visit out here in Utah one day, because, you know, the Great Salt Lake is in a very precarious position, and it's, it's water. It's also unusual because it's the largest, uh, one of the largest salt water landmarks uh, in the geographical sense. And there isn't much of it left. So <laughs> it's quite fascinating. Yes, yes. And then the science fiction element too. And uh, water is uh, in chemistry is also used um, as a major reagent uh, for multiple chemical reactions. So yep, water protection. Yep, Patrick, you're you're adding quite a bit too, so I appreciate it. And then um, that's really great. And then with your practice, uh, like, have you been able to maintain like flexibility in uh, having a studio? I mean, I know, I think you graduated, so. Yes. So I... how, how are you able to maneuver? Uh, I mean, I assume, I don't know if you can access Cal, Cal Arts studio space, but I don't, think so so they you kind of have to so how are you uh, working with that and then you know especially during the COVID era yeah it's quite funny because during the the past one year I think I'm I've been working in my bedroom mainly because I can't get access to the studio on campus and I I didn't try to get like a studio outside because I was like oh I do have a studio on campus I just can't get into it so I Somehow I just didn't really get a studio outside school. But 
it's actually okay. I've been making ceramic in my bedroom, which is not that healthy, but I did make like many ceramics mm -hmm. and um, because I do a lot of like video work. So it's like very based on like, a, just like a laptop and uh, I can just do whatever I want. And I do like a little bit like writings and making zines and do some drawings and paintings. So um, overall it's okay. And the, the, the biggest project that, I, that I, I did in the, during the call, not quarantine, but during the COVID, it's like I built like a casket in, the, in a gallery space for one of the sculpture I made. And I made like a commercial for the casket, trying to, I don't know, let people buy the casket or just like trying to promote the casket. Hmm. But I, I did the project in the in the ex exhibition space because I was trying to laugh at Carl Arts not giving us a studio. And since it gave us like an exhibition space in New Hall, then I was like, okay, I'm just going to use the exhibition space. It's a very weird like storefront gallery space with tinted windows that people can't really see what is happening inside. So, so I used that space as my studio for a week and built a casket for one of my sculptures because I I can no longer storage the sculpture in my studio anymore. I need to make a casket for it and hold a funeral for it some in the future, in the recent future. That's the biggest project that I did. Oh yeah. Well, that's impressive. I mean, we'll have to say uh, the predecessors maybe was uh, Badrasali like burning all his art into an urn, I guess. So uh, there's I a lot of history with caskets, graves, Actually, uh, Ed Ruscha actually has a current show uh, where he actually does the font of funerary, like funerary fonts of gravestones. So, yeah, I guess uh, the morbid slash macabre is uh, it's quite fascinating, uh, especially during this this era, you know. Uh, where, I guess, yeah. So, yeah, well, thanks for sharing that. And then um, I'm going to probably also, I think it's great to know you better, but well, like, what are some of your like hobbies and interests outside of like when you're not making art? Uh, when I'm not making art, um, well, I, I like to watch cooking shows a lot. <laughs> I was like actually talking to one of the faculty. I was talking to Michael about cooking, sh sharing cooking shows with him. It was like sharing like YouTube videos of like the, um, uh, a woman cooking like Mexican food and things like that. And I was sharing him like Japanese shows about like uh, people trying to find like zero budget materials to make things. But it's, I mean, it's one of the hobby I will say. And uh, I, I also really like science fiction, to be honest. I was- Oh, I was, that's great. I was part of like the science fiction club when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to write science fiction novels and uh, apply to mag like science fiction magazines. And somehow one of the members succeed and it was like a huge thing for our club. And we, we were like so excited about that. But that's definitely one of the interests too. Um, beside that, what else? Um, I mean, I used to do a lot of drawings when I was in high school, but after that, I was actually majoring in sculpture. So I, I don't really draw that that often as like a, as work. Oh, use drawing a lot as part of my project, but I, I tend to treat it as a hobby recently, kind of like drawing for fun and drawing just for my personal pleasure, not really for anything. Yeah. Yeah, so I do that a lot too. Um, yeah, and I mean, like films, books, that's what everyone else loves. Yeah. That, that's great. Well, yeah, but, uh, yeah, in general, I like building stuff too, like just creating objects. I love oh, yeah. Building stuff. That's great. Well, I'm very appreciative of that. I mean, yeah, it's important to have a diverse set of interests. And uh, yeah, cooking's interesting. Science fiction's interesting. Um, I mean, I like all those too. So although my, my cooking shows tend to be YouTube videos, uh, of Uncle Roger. You know, <laughs> yeah, doing, I still love it. It's postmodern commentary on, uh, well, a lot of topics. I actually you read it very quickly, especially as a Asian. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, Patrick, but 
should have watched Uncle Roger. Original yeah. Iron Chef? Yes. Yeah, it's well, good. this is more hilarious than any Iron Chef. As much as the Iron Chef was entertaining, Uncle Roger's commentary are, are still legendary by far. Not vegan? Well. Um, yeah, I love guess. MSG. Yes. Well, you know, MSG is vegan. I mean, but I don't know. Whether it's healthy is so good. Um, now, whether you can use it in sculpture, that might be something you might look into. But uh, so, yeah, so that, that's really important. And then, um, well, let's see. Um, I told you about the space. I mean, let's see what else. Do I do? Oh, yeah, our Instagram's really kept up to date. So if you do want to look at what's usually going on in the gallery, um, yeah, that should be a good starting point. Uh, it, uh, I, I post on it. Um, I'm actually the only person posting on it, just so you know, um, because uh, Bryce uh, is not, he, he, he does a lot of Instagramming, but I guess he likes being more behind the scenes uh, type of approach. And then. Um, so what yeah. are, what's the schedule like at Office Space in the next six months, Albert? Yeah, uh, it's pretty open. I mean, we got our new projects so there's really nothing booked office space collective is probably going to deliver another show once those once the tapestry and the three pins are documented um that show will be going up uh but really the project space is completely free um, is that the restaurant space you mean no that's not the restaurant space that's actually the office space we moved into office space which is so like really really nice yeah so what are the dimensions of that as far as work and uh, work can fit in there like what kind of show can fit in there is that as you said it's more conceptual like yeah we can fit well, let's see i would say this is my bedroom slash downstairs office i'd say it's a good fourth of this space uh but the wall space is pretty much like from here like there all the way to there so i'd say it's a good what about 12 foot across and then an extra on our side, probably a good six foot. So 18 um, linear feet. And then the height is probably a good, I don't know, let's see. We Han Chun's work today. So it's, let's see, we have 80 inches tall plus another, I'd say a good like 120 inches tall, whatever that would be. So that's 10 feet. Which is pretty good, uh, especially because it's we're doing solo time. shows in there. Um, yeah, it'd be most uh, solo shows, solo shows, very loose group okay. shows, which I don't even know we want to do. And then obviously, obviously, office space collective show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, that's a solo show in my consideration because it's just a bunch of folks that are together. But um, but yeah, it, it's meant for solo shows, and yeah, that's pretty open. That's um, okay. In our main space, we are booked until the end of this year, for sure. Uh, but we have a lot of leeway. Um, our backspace is not being used, so we can schedule anything, if it's works on paper, that is. Um, video works or new media works will go into the project space. Um, that is like not negotiable because Raj just doesn't want to relinquish his TV to somehow play these music videos. I don't think restaurant. <laughs> Are they like oh, the music videos? I, I mean, well, some of these videos were great for Gaustro, but we just found out that it were a turnoff for a lot of the folks, especially because Stephanie was eating in the video oh. for one of them, uh, like in her white vegetable series. So I think eating, watching someone else eat, which is not Indian food, uh, just through. Oh my God. Yeah, so that, that did not work very well. Yeah. I know. That's what it was about. It was about Stephanie eating on a video. That yeah, one of them. It's part of we we have six videos over that we go through. But um yeah, the white the white vegetable series is very important because it talks about the secret history of you know when the Chinese people there was a ban in the United States. Uh and then a lot of the Chinese folks moved to northern Mexico. So there's a gazillion you know Chinese restaurants in northern Mexico like Baja California and stuff. So Stephanie explores that history. I think she goes down there and eats there. And it's quite fascinating. It's 
you know, white vegetable is, is you know, the concept of white, you know, now concept of whiteness, um, vegetable, and nothing against like being vegan, but I guess vegetable is like the fall from innocence as well as the different, you know, aspects, you know, of her self identity. And it's, uh, it's quite fascinating. Um, unfortunately, the art critics didn't really get it in Utah. Stephanie's work is very complex. Uh, and they're just, I don't know. Uh, especially also, you know, you know, overlays of like queer, you know, identity and stuff like that. But yeah, we still have a long way to go. But yeah, Stephanie's work kind of threw people off because watching her eat, because that's part of her performance in a segment, while they're eating Indian food, pro I don't know, probably didn't do their food service. <laughs> But, uh, but you know, it was a good idea, but I just think that it's probably easier now. We have our separate project space. We upgraded um, from our original office and then, you know, yeah, we're just very grateful. So I think um, this is the way to go. And you know? uh, Albert, where is this project space and what kind of foot traffic does it get? Or is there a sort of... Like oh, it's getting, it gets quite a bit of foot traffic. I actually... Uh, started meeting people and like a real estate company wants to do staging with the physical work. So for their real estate, which I know I have very uncomfortable relation, but it's interesting. Uh, so we get some foot traffic. Um, we're not gonna get, it's kind of more by private appointment. So uh, just like going up to Commonwealth is not exactly the easiest path. Uh, it's sort of like that. So, well, maybe Commonwealth gets a lot more foot traffic. Uh, but you got to call them and to get in and everything. So, yeah, it's yeah, definitely. but you still have to type in codes to get in Commonwealth. We're not like Bloom and Plum, where you could just like go on a skateboard and just crash through and probably piss off the front attendant if you did. I actually want to skateboard through that. I, I don't even know how to skateboard. <laughs> you want I to just skateboard want to through, through Blumenpo's doorway? Yeah, I, I, you know, I when I go to LA, if I go from MFA, I'll, you know me, it's going to be terrible risk taking. Uh, but, um, I'm actually going to do you a favor. Uh, just wait. Okay, let me close out my uh, music app. I'm going to share some stuff. So this is probably um, this is probably the best way to render a good understanding of the space here. Uh, just wait. Yeah, actually, this is better. Now that I'm actually at home, uh, home, sort of home. Uh, yeah, this is my house. So. Uh, Let's see. Okay, let's do this. So you want to see what the space is like. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to share. Sorry, guys. Slight movie. Here we go. Do, do, do. This is our Instagram. So you following it. So this yeah. is the project space here. Pretty dope. We have locked capability. The two paintings are not locked up. But I, if someone walks away with a chum painting, A, I'm very impressed, and B, uh, that's tragic, but they're big. So it's going to be pretty obvious that you're taking art. Um, we Obviously, this is the back uh, of the restaurant gallery. Um, obviously, I was working with Madison. I'm very tired because Madison and I worked on our project, and that didn't go as planned. Uh, sorry, these are not related. Um, this is like our project space. We have a computer desk, so we can show our video art here, continue on the continuous loop. Um, this is again the back space. Those are the paintings, office space collective paintings that we have. Uh, so this gives indication of what we can show. That's actually pretty good size, I think. So we can put well, Chen's paintings will cover that. Um, and then I can put work on those windows, but I prefer not to. Uh, we can put a small work there, work here, and then obviously a chunk of work on the back wall. I actually chose the office with the maximal amount of exhibitable space that we can nail or command strip on. Um, again, this is our new space. Obviously we have a lot more stuff. So like on that desk, can you display sculptures on top of the desk? Yeah, I have to clean it up, yeah. Uh, although we prefer to um, exhibit our sculptures on our pedestal in the restaurant. Uh, this is kind of like our makeshift Stephanie thing. We don't have access to the bar anymore because we already pissed off the bartender. 
which uh, so we lost access to that. That's fine. They want to put their Kentucky Derby paintings, as far as I know, go ahead. You know, if you that's what you want to spend your 20k budget. But this is our sculpture pedestal. So Madison's work is going to be there at some point, but she we're just going to have to troubleshoot it majorly. Just a lot of work. Edie sculpture is going to be there or the front. So right there is pretty sizable. Unfortunately, Marissa's piece um, broke today or this week. Um, this is Marissa's show. Gives you an indication of just the size of everything. On space. Yeah. Sorry, that's not our space. And we don't have access to that. That's, that's actually our office in the restaurant. Tons of art books. Uh, this is, we have a gallery close to the bathroom. So we have some work there, which we're very excited. Um, we can do some freestanding sculpture. That's one of Ryan's pieces. Um, more Chun work there. You know, not typical. It's not white box. You're not going to get that here. So um, that's actually my trip to Mocha. So don't count that. Um, in the front, we have exhibition space as well. So we're going to have Claire's work along with Becca, Becca's work. And then our front window as well. So we're going to put a big fat sculpture, some either ED sculpture. Hopefully she'll be done with it at some point. Uh, then we just put it there. So we can exhibit right there as well for freestanding work. So if you have ceramic work, um, we can put it there. Um, ideally, shipping ceramic is hard. So I don't know. Maybe we'll have to do like a major trip, road trip from LA to here and just get a bunch of your work, Patrick. And, Really, you know, yeah, we can, we can get our we can combined drive. forces because it, it'll save. Plus, you know, making a trip out here is great. Um, this is where I will start fabricating a lot of stuff. Um, I'm actually working with him to do UV printing. That's something you want to take note, Patrick, because UV printing is way cheaper here than LA. I checked price quotes. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is the best way to look at where our work cool. is at. So, and so the um, the restaurant space will be open like maybe uh, early next year. Is a possibility of getting uh, shows. Oh, actually, we can get shows even now because we don't have the back room anything in the back room at the moment. So that's completely open. Uh, and well, I thought you said the restaurant space was booked up for the rest of this year. It is booked up, but we can put stuff in the back. Just it's not oh, the, that's the bathroom, you mean? Yeah, that's where we do our storage. Uh, if you really needed a show like this year, we will do it. I see. It's not the most ideal, just so you know, but it's still viable space. It's actually also the largest room. Um, they're actually trying to put some parties in there. I don't know why anyone would want to have a party during COVID time. But then again, I actually hate parties, just so you know. Um, you, I actually will pay if we go to art fair. I pay someone to go to the art, the parties for me. I'm only there. You'll see me sneak in, grab food, walk out. That's how I operate. Um, I actually have social anxiety, so um, I, I like small groups. But I'm sorry, I you know big groups scare me. In concerts, I barely can make it. But the back room is going to be a great open space. It's just the lighting is really bad. Actually. Where Marissa's work is, is not spectacular. It's actually very cold lighting. So the best places are still in the front. And then we got this long hallway. But right now that's saved for Sky's paintings, uh, pending approval by um, Raj. Especially, um, yeah, well, you know. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to be honest, our relationship with the restaurant is highly tenuous at the moment because... Some of the art actually has offended other gallers in the Salt Lake area, just so you know. And we haven't even shown anything like explicitly sexual or political, um, but they just don't know what the hell we're doing. Like that's, I can't believe that's actually a reason to be offended, but yeah, they just don't see a skiing painting or like tourist painting. And yes, download that. Okay, cool. Okay. 
I know you have social anxiety, but you were also wearing Hayes mat. Uh, yes. Yes. Garment I, at the Alexa yeah. Art Fair. So I just wanted to say, you know, you're 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 very personable as well, even if you feel anxious. Yes. Just uh, I, I if I'm in a crowd of like 500 people, I wear the Hayes mat bag as well as the Hayes mat suit over my head. So um, yeah, that's the only difference. <laughs> yes, I can. I am pretty open. It's just, you know, it's, I don't know. I'm very complicated, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, is there, uh, what, well, actually another question I have is what, what can we do as a gallery to be supportive of your practice? And what do you envision us wanting to help you for your future projects? Apart from obviously showing your work. Um, I, I guess, like, beside having shows, I, I'm very excited to make actually connections with people like just outside the Cal Arts group because yeah. after, because of the COVID, because of every other things, it's like right now everyone I know is from Cal Arts, and you know I'm very happy to to meet some someone from different cities and have different stories and backgrounds. I'm very happy for that. Oh and, yeah, and beside that, I'm very interested in. Um, like writers and uh, curators because personally I'm still kind of lack of that kind of experience and uh, although I, I do write a lot in my practice but it's kind of like very funny because of my ways of language and things like that so I would love to work with like writers and people with like more professional writing experiences or like um just in general, more professionally writing. So I would love to do that. And um, yeah, so I think things like that, I'm very interested in and also like press release. Oh, um, I'm in a meeting, mom. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> My mom uh, just <laughs> I, Yeah, like-, um, uh, like Yeah, quote's <laughs> done, but double chat. Sorry, I'm doing laundry. No, no, no That's worries. The one thing. No. Sorry, my mom just walked in. And <gasps> That's nice, actually. Uh, yeah, I, I did a lot of laundry, just so you know. But, yeah, but you have to stick your hand in there, Mom, because uh, it may not really be dry. Okay. Okay, well, you can get your quilt slash blanket. Sorry. Um. Yeah, so I, I you know, I do want to be... Writing, yes, and writing. Yeah, and we do professional laundry service, maybe, at some point. Um, <laughs> oh, cool. I, actually, uh, speaking of that, um, we want to be very supportive whatever you do um just so you know a lot of it's also very experimental um we do yeah. we're working on monographs um and i actually love doing artist books um i write a lot uh but um i also try to be careful because um, i prefer other people to write about my art or like the collective you know just because conflict of interest so we we try to be very careful like ethically um it's never perfect uh, just so you know, in the art world, things can get really messy. Um, I'm actually also looking at doing like editions from the gallery. Um, we're working on some experimental like photographs slash prints on like Centra through UV printing. Uh, I've been working on that. That's a lot of work. Uh, and then um, just so you know, things aren't going to be done the quickest uh, because that's we're a three person slash four person team. Just trying to manage 40 artists and um you know not every artist wants to necessarily have like solo shows there they just want to like have a conduit to sell art which is fine uh but a lot of artists want you know to show so it's kind of like a lot of work because we have to do the press releases which um you know in utah doesn't really you know people are you know are baffled which is fine but it's still important because the critical theory the contextualization of the work uh, and obviously hopefully uh you know once you get represented you know you'll be able to promote that press release to your cohorts um also if you want to meet like some non cal arts folk uh that's really great too and um i uh i actually am east coaster so i look forward to you know helping from anything from like art practice to like, if you need a recommendation in New York, where to eat. Uh, usually um, I can sort of provide that, but 
but I also might end up being one of you too, potentially in two years, just so you know. But uh, I'll probably be a weird bird there because uh, I always see myself as this place in Parker. Um, so, um, yeah. What a full art fair, Albert. Um, hmm? Oh, yeah, we applied to some art fairs. I think I already said that. Oh, I mean, art fair, the website where uh, you're, you're selling stuff. Yes, let's show you that. Okay, sorry. That's right, I keep forgetting. We do sell work. Uh, we actually have successfully sold some pieces. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, that's something um, we're very excited. We got curated successfully to this. Whoa, sorry, I've been spinning on my own screen. Here. Anyway, sorry, I'm a vivacious talker, so. Yeah, so this is us here. Yep, 24 followers. So this is, we rotate art digitally and uh, it's quite a variety. Actually, you might wanna look at her work. Uh, she's actually in Tucson, a professor out there. She does a lot of like exploration of her Vietnamese identity as well. Um, we do have a very Asian slash Asian American heavy presence, just so you know. So that will be fairly comfortable. You see Stephanie's work there, so. And then we got her, we're applying to NADA, Miami. So uh, we actually got some cutting edge work that she's doing. Uh, but yeah, so we got a quite a variety. And this is where we sell work. Actually, Patrick, you sold some work earlier this year through this online uh, store. So you seem to, it worked well, I think, right? I guess for what it does. Experience, very positive experience for sure. Yeah, and uh, but I, I think it, it's tough. I'm just, just so you know, we are, you know, selling art is kind of, is important, but just so you know, we're mostly focused on the conceptual drive over anything else. We do have, you know, a few artists that are more traditional, uh, but but I, I, I personally, myself, lean heavily towards the very conceptual and cutting edge and very experimental. Um, but I, I do appreciate traditional uh, printmaking and drawing and, you know, like that. So I do appreciate that as well. But uh, for me, I see our gallery really focusing heavily. Um, we, I, I like to move, you know, into conceptual art, new media, video, which are very difficult to sell. Like, I'm not kidding. I don't know how BitForms Gallery in New York does it, but they've been doing it for over a decade. They must have some magic thing. Maybe, uh, maybe really they were the gallery that Matrix movies, not the brothers. You know, I don't know. Somehow they do it successfully and they're very cutting edge. Uh, so it is possible, but it's just hard to break into that. Uh, and, um, you know, I know I've seen a lot of like very cutting edge work in LA, um, but I'm going to be upfront. Um, this is a very biased sample. I didn't see very much video work. Um, you know, at CAM, I only saw one video piece by Sanford Biggers, plus a few other, you know, video related pieces. Uh, but uh, the Bro Museum, I think, what, we only saw one video piece there, right? There wasn't yeah. really any. So Maybe. That, yeah, I think it was one. Yeah, that's there. like painfully, like, not much. New York would have been like, different you True. know really i don't know if that's just an la thing i, I maybe that was just a bias. Was so many paintings it was like what, what's up with that i like went to felix and it's just it just makes me feel like the only thing i'm allowed to do is paint it's so weird yeah I mean, well, yeah if you want to make money if we want to make money so like painting is like it's like the most acceptable and most common way that people use to make money because only paintings sell. But I mean, it's crazy because photography is so important. What yeah. happened to photography in LA? I'm a photography maker. But I mean, obviously, I'm not your usual doctor. photography. I'm just puzzled. I go to New York and I feel I like just, more, I really feel like it's more an American trend. No, no, New York and has quite a diversity because. Oh, you we'll think so? New York. I, oh, yeah. I actually haven't seen much in New York, so I don't oh, know. Oh, no. New York is like, they whip a new media piece, and that's why Trevor Paglin did so well. Like, you don't see Trevor Paglin in L.A. Like, Trevor Paglin's very difficult. 
His photographs in New York are just monumental. And that's also interesting because Bogosian now has that Tyrant Tyron Simon show. That's not going to LA. It's strictly New York. Because New and I love I, I love LA because it has that very experimental vibe. But I also enjoy doing paintings uh, as well. And actually, um, I should probably uh, make a quick allusion. Playform is really cool. Uh, for I think it'll be really interesting to work around that. I, I do highly suggest looking at that too, uh, if for new media slash video art. But yeah, when I was in LA, maybe I should have gone and checked. Um, obviously, I miss Hammer and Lackman. But I don't know if they have more video art or new media art. So I got to see whether I, I you know, maybe, I know the Bro Museum, obviously, it's you know, that's just a private collection. So, it's a, you know, it's a pretty biased sample. I mean, we're lucky we saw even saw a Hans Hacke piece. So I guess, uh, and actually, I'm glad I saw it because I've never seen one. And then, oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, so any like other things we you want to know? I mean, we can definitely talk more. Oh, by the way, I'm actually allude to. Um, so the things we'll need, I guess, for getting your web page up on the gallery for um, to wrap up a uh, headshot JPEG format is preferred for that. Um, CV, uh, artist statement, bio, uh, and then up to ten images with info. Um, so we can like build your web page for representation, just like now. Um, it's pretty, I mean, you can just look at the, our website at Office Spaces so see, and then it's it's all standard. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, Patrick, did I miss anything else or? Feels pretty good to me. What about you, Ari? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so far everything seems good. Well, I was just thinking like, for example, I mean, although there are many um, space that might not be like ideal for like projections and things like that, but there are still like even the, the back, back part, I mean, of the restaurant can be just like handing a monitor and screen some videos that's still possible. So I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, and then our project space, we can again show video art. Um, yeah. Humorously, I we do actually have a projector in that business that I can use. And I actually would negotiate to use that for like pop-up shows and stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm very excited, uh, especially that new space is, is feels like a real gallery uh, that I can work with. Whereas, yeah, sounds, sounds good. That's all the information that I'm like curious yeah. about. Um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, yeah, that'll be cool. And then for the more complex stuff, hopefully, you know, and this goes for you too, Patrick, that you could come out to Salt Lake uh, if it's very super complicated to install, especially if it's ambitious. So, because, uh, you know, I mean, uh, even though I'm an artist, uh, sometimes instructions aren't always the easiest to figure out, you know, as I'm learning very quickly about Madison, she lives here. So, you know, if you have very complex installation, I, I you know, let, you know, require something, I think, if it's, especially if it's site specific, um, you know, coming to Salt Lake, you know, this is, is, I highly suggest for that, but that's only if it, it requires that kind of legwork, just so you know. Yeah, I mean, during the COVID, I got a lot of practice about just like transporting ceramics and- uh, Oh yeah. Stuff in my car, I had a lot of experience of that, so. Ceramics are a lot easier you know, <laughs> to, uh, to ship, sort of. So yeah. I, I received some ceramics from UCLA. So I, I know definitely if you pack it really well, it's it's not too bad. Cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, feel free to email. Uh, if you have anything else, um, you can text me and Patrick and or Patrick if you have any other questions. So uh, and then, yeah, we'll, we can schedule you whenever you feel like um, you know, it's just up to you. I mean, some things we to, we're very flexible. Like Madison Show, for example, is delayed just because we had logistical issues in engineering. So, uh, yeah, um, I mean, sounds good. Uh, I'm I'm also very flexible right now. Yeah, I mean, whenever you have stuff you want to show, we'll show anything pretty much. So you have works on paper. I mean, even works that you may not even deem as like finalized artworks, we'll show too. I mean, 
you know, galleries show like preliminary sketches as a show or like maquettes as a show. So, I mean, we, we're very open. We, you know, as long as you have a fairly solid concept, we're more than happy to exhibit it just because, you know, we want to support the artists. That's, that's our primary thing. So. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, and then feel free if you want any more Zoom calls, uh, you know, anytime. Uh, so uh, we'll be very happy. And then I'll be in LA if, as well. Uh, I definitely will be in LA. <laughs> that was quite an experience, uh, but I think uh, definitely more adventures away. So uh, anyway, uh, Patrick, uh, thanks again for coordinating this, honestly. Yeah, thank you both so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, are you uh, gonna head home soon, I guess, Patrick? Or you're gonna- I'm kind of I'm seeing how late they'll let me stay, yeah. Where are you? Do they have guards or something? Seven. Like, is there an official, like, you have to, like, supposedly be out of your studio or not really? 7 p.m. is the closed time of Canvas, but um, it's nine, so. Yeah, I don't, I think it's just fascinating. As long as you don't have 51, like, MFAs, well, actually, yeah, running around campus, I think you're mostly fine. I know, I'm like, should I buy a cot? I don't even know. Well, actually, to be honest, uh, you know, a lot of artists do sleep in their studio space. It's very common. I, True. I've seen it. When's Zoe supposed to... Um, Maybe Roy Yi would know better, actually. Did people sleep in their studios? Yes. I mean, one of, not one, but several of my friends actually built themselves like a bed with like a storage room beneath. Like, and would, would public or would the campus safety kick them out or were they just, it was just whatever? Um, Campus safety didn't really, I don't really think campus safety really, really bother about that a lot. And all the teachers know that they are like sleeping in their studios. And also if you decided to sleep in the studios, um, there are actually several showers in, on the on campus that you can get access to. Really? Like where, where are they? There's one in the super shop. Don't. No don't let Alexandria know, <laughs> but maybe <laughs> maybe you can let her know and she will actually tell you that there's a shower that you can use. And there is like shower um, in the like dance apartment for the actresses after they oh, okay. the exercise. Yeah, so there are several places, but the super nice. shop one is like the highly recommended one. Yeah. <laughs> and people would shower in there when Alexandria wasn't in there? Um. It depends if you are like a employee in the in the super shop, then you can just do whatever you want, and you will oh, actually yeah. have a key. Uh, okay, you can okay. have like after hour access to all the equipments. Um, if you just do the cleanup. No uh, shit, I didn't know that. You can have ac after hour access to the super shop if you're an employee. If you are an employee, yes. Oh, just work and there. If you have like yeah. really good relationship with. Alexandra and don't let her know that I tell you about this <laughs> like yeah, you can yeah. have like actual like access to the facilities but wow. yeah but, but at the same time actually super shop close at I don't know like 9 p.m every night or things like that I mean before the COVID and after COVID I think there are more restrictions but before that it's like a very nice place to work um, oh yeah. great okay great Thank yeah, you. and um, many people actually stay on campus. Um, yeah. Okay. Very All common. Right. Good but, to know. Yeah, but right now I don't know. <coughs> I'm just yeah. curious if there are any other MFAs running around doing the same thing because, you know, if people paint, it's really hard to do it in your own house, honestly, especially big yeah. well, I mean, before I was, I mean, I attended a class to make like ceramic glades and because all the um, chemicals that I was using are toxic. So I can't really do that in my own apartment because I'm like sharing an apartment with another, um, another friend. So I had to sneak into the studio and mix the ceramic glades there, like all the chemical stuff there. So, I mean, you can always get into the studio because we don't really have a gate. Um, you can just like climb the mountains by the street and just 
do whatever you want. Oh, that's so, true. I was thinking about that today. How there's actually not a fence around the campus. Like you can there's just, no fence. You can do whatever you want. Oh. Just don't and do I'll, anything like illegal, honestly. And then, and, uh, yeah. But uh, but a quick question: Were your ceramics undergrad? I, I actually should ask. Like um, Cal Arts. Before I um, attended to Cal Arts, I was majoring in sculpture and the. Mm -hmm studio that I was in is actually um, really into all different kinds of materials. And at that time, the studio had of our like sculpture department and of my studio was actually like the headmaster of a sculpture university in China. So he has a lot of like connections with like ceramic makings and kilns and craftsmen's all different kind of things. So I was sent to like a ceramic making like town in China for like a semester living on a, on the second floor of a museum, just making ceramic all day. So oh, I wow. do have a lot of trainings about ceramic, but I'm not good with um, the will. Beside that, I can do everything, but I just can't do the, the thoroughly. Oh, no, that's fine. I mean, ceramic is very open. I mean, I have books on that like the vitamin C and Phaedon's master summary of anything that's contemporary ceramic and wheel is hardly used in a lot of them. I almost tempted to say, uh, Patrick, maybe someday we're going to have to do like a reality TV show, like stick a webcam and just record like the lighting and presence of the studio 24-7. Like stream that as a work of art. That's good. That I love that. Yeah. That would be interesting. I it just it's just something ethereal about looking at your background, Patrick. So, but uh, cool. I guess uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll um, yeah. If there's anything you have any last minute things or uh, I I appreciate the meeting honestly. Both of you. So yeah. I think everything sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, and let me know if you know if you want if you want to know more secrets about like the access on on campus, like all the. <laughs> I think I got a huge dose of that already, and uh, yeah, it's just something I have to get used to because Cal Arts is is a single building. I'm not used to that concept, which is highly revolutionary. Yeah. Um, so you know, because you know, I, I attend. And I've been to other universities like Yale and Vanderbilt, which are not like that at all. So Cowards is very unique in that regard, but it's also, honestly, that architecture does have an impact, and that makes it very revolutionary. But then again, you know, Patrick, your staying in the studio is, is heroic, but, it, you know, could you stay for a 12-hour critique with Michael Asher, you know? <laughs> so... I would like to think that I could. But. Yeah, I think so too. That would be nice. But yeah, um, we'll do um, some more Zoom calls. Hopefully, uh, you know, come out here, visit Salt Lake, check out Spiral Jetty. Well, well, so, you know, if we have any water, that would be Jetty. nice. I would so, love that as well. And then, uh, oh, I know. It's just, you know, Tootsie yeah. Warhol went there and took some photos. It was just no water. It was weird. Like, I don't know what to say, but uh yeah so anyway thanks again and then uh yeah we'll chat more soon feel free to email and then um you know you can text as well um just so you know um let me give you my number before i go uh, for any questions that yeah so cool so yeah you got patrick's too so uh thanks again and then uh yeah we'll chat more soon later so and Thank then, you both so much. Yeah, no, oh, I have, should oh, I much. also put my? <laughs> oh, oh sure. Yeah, actually, that that's up to you. Great idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I'll photograph that. That's cool. Okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah, feel free to uh, have any questions and stuff like that. Um. You know, I will definitely be out in LA fairly soon. Uh, I strongly believe. Um, it just depends. A lot of it depends on where do we get people in Miami and stuff, because you know that's it's crazy. It gets crazy in winter for our world. So cool. And then uh, if you want to do another Zoom call? We can get Bryce and Melissa hopefully at some point. So thanks again, and cool. have a lovely evening, Patrick. Uh, feel free to uh, text uh, and then uh, as well. So 
Thanks again, and we'll talk more, okay? Yeah, sounds All good. Right. Thank you both. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye.